stem splitting. So some people actually split the the stem or, or the stalk during the grow. Typically, it's a little bit before harvest in order to stress the plant into producing more trichomes. Does that actually work? I don't think so. Um, you know, it kind of depends on what flavor of trichome we're talking about. There are a, a couple of different ones. Um, you know, there's the ones that have heads on them with the stalks. There's ones that have just the stalks with no heads. There's ones that are just the heads sitting on the surface of the leaf with no stalks. And then there's some that are non-glandular trichomes that are either phytolith uh, deposits, like if you grow cucumbers or if you grow tomatoes, those pokey little um, spines that go all up along the stalk. And particularly for some varietals of cucumber, they can actually form on the fruit itself. Those are cystoliths if they're calcium carbonate deposits, and they're phytoliths if they're some kind of uh, silica deposit. So for plants that take up a lot of large concentration of silicon, zucchini, and squash are good examples of plants that can do this. They'll actually secrete those and make non-glandular trichomes, and those serve defensive purposes as well. So I would say if you're talking about in the context of glandular trichomes, the ones that have the stalks and the heads, it's probably not going to increase the biosynthesis of them. There are a couple of studies that are coming out that particularly done on like hops for lupulin glands, then also on lavender buds, which produce a lot of large concentration of linalool and myrcene you know, osamine, camphene, these terpenes might be quite familiar um, to your audience. You know, lavender buds, it's been shown that um, there's a phenomena that happens in the early stages of flowering where, and, th and this may not be true for all plants, but effectively the idea is that the plant is in the first two to three weeks of flowering, the plant's trying to figure out which of its trichomes are going to be the ones with the heads and with the stalks coming off of it. And it starts to dedicate resources really early on because plants are master mathematicians. They're really, really good at doing math, and they're really good for planning ahead. They're always trying to build uh, an understanding of what's right around the corner, you know, because they're trying to build up stockpiles of energy so they can deal with changes in the environment and things like that. But all this ultimately to say that the presence of these, um, you know, the, the bulbous, the capitate stalked trichomes is what they're called, but the ones that have heads on them, the decision to make those is made several weeks in advance before it actually extends off the leaf surface and becomes an actual stalked trichome with a head on it. So the plant's trying to plan and, and try to figure these things out pretty early on in the process. So to do it just before harvest um, doesn't really give the plants enough time to adjust properly because in, as far as the expression goes um, of the plant, you know, they make these decisions several weeks in advance before it actually happens. That's why I think focusing on what happens in the first two to three weeks of flowering can actually set the plants up for success for the second half of flowering so you can get the best possible results. Um, and to you know answer the question more directly or more specifically, I, I don't think that it would be directly connected to an increase in yield or quality. You may see some terpenes come out, or not terpenes, I'm sorry, you may see some trichomes come up, but those may not be the ones that become concentrated in oils. Those may be more defensive compounds like the non-glandular trichomes or even the ones that don't have heads, they're just the stalks that come out. This clip is brought to you by Happy Hydro. For all your garden equipment needs, visit happyhydro.com, link is in the video description, and use the discount code MrGrowIt 